Come on, Eric Fierro, guys. Let's go. Guy just crushed it up there, did he not? Wow. I started uh, with his encouragement, actually, with Eric's encouragement back in January, I started inserting automation into my wife's business, and it's, it's been a game changer. I mean, we have a completely automated RSVP system. We send out the ad, they automate right into the RSVP. We don't have to deal with them. We go in there, right into our system, ready to go, right? Automated ANOC letters. So every time AEP comes around, we have an automation that goes right out and says, hey, it's that time of year again, just so you know. Don't forget about us. So the truth is you don't have the time not to learn how to start using automation. So I would also encourage you to get out there and, and, and learn it. So moving right along, our next speaker is a seasoned sales professional. He's the founder and CEO of the Medicare Specialist, which is an independent agency serving over 4,000 clients since 2009 nationwide. They are expanding locations across the Eastern Seaboard. And he is here today to talk to you about branding Please give me a beautiful warm welcome for Mr. Chip Lewis. How's it going, guys? Somebody left their glasses and their water. Um, I'm Chip Lewis. I'm the founder and CEO of the Medicare specialist, I'm always self conscious about it. I'm like, is it the Medicare specialist? Is it the Medicare specialist? We're gonna talk a little bit about branding today and how the name of your company or how you pronounce the name of your company might not necessarily be your brand. And we'll get to that in a second. But first, thank you guys for having me. Oh my gosh, Medicare Con 2022. This is pretty cool, pretty cool. When Justin asked me to talk, I was like, okay, he'll probably put me like on the night shift. I'll be in a closet somewhere, but no, main stage, baby. So I'm going to try to bring it for you guys. Um, I don't have much of a life. I've got two kids and diapers. So uh, <laughs> my life pretty much consists of work and family, work and family. And then for fun, usually I just talk about work. Seriously, my idea of a good time is grabbing a cocktail once the kids go down, going out to my home office jumping on a call with a few of my guys and uh, just chopping it up about Medicare. And when I say chopping it up about Medicare, tell me if this sounds familiar. We usually turn into like Medicare cavemen where we're just screaming Medicare terms like renewals. Renewals are the best. I know you guys do it if you ever have a cocktail with your agents. Or January. We just got to get to January. Everybody's broke during AEP, right? January. Everybody's got the calculator out. If I sell 7 million apps in the next 30 years, I'll be a multi-billionaire. So this is fun for me, super fun, honored to share the stage with so many great ambassadors for this wonderful industry. Uh, poured my heart and soul into Medicare for the past 13 years and it's given me so much back. So thank you guys so much for having me. <clears throat> I hate this part. So most of you guys probably have no idea who I am because I do a really nice job of hiding in the shadows. And if I were you and I was gonna listen to me talk or possibly take advice from me, I'd at least wanna know some credentials. So. Been in the game since around 2009 and uh, personally have around 1,400 clients. Over the past three and a half years, we have uh, built an agency of around 40 agents. And during that time, they've written around 13,000 apps. Um, we're projected to do around 10,000 apps this year in 2022. And our, our primary focus is the turn 65 market. And really our shtick is we are localizing nationally. We started as Savannah Medicare Specialist. That's my hometown. That's my location. And then once we got that primed up, we said, let's scale this thing and duplicate it. So we started moving out to Greenville Medicare Specialist and Augusta Medicare Specialist, Columbia Medicare Specialist. And that's how we created the Medicare Specialist. Um, our main form of advertising is television. I know that's pretty unique. Not a lot of folks are doing it. I know Justin is. Um, but we're in 10 markets right now. We're spending a lot of money on television and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that here in a few. I think we skipped too many there. No, we didn't. All right, so what are we gonna talk about today? Medicaid, I'm just kidding, we're not talking about that. We're gonna talk about branding, how to start a brand. So I promise you, whether you've been in this game for 13 years or 13 days, you will be able to take something out of this talk. So we're gonna talk about the basics to starting a brand. I'm gonna give you a marketing technique 
that's not a strategy, it's a technique you can use across multiple strategies. Then I'm gonna give you a sales tip that it goes against the grain. Some of you guys might not agree with it, but it will definitely help if you implement it. And then also, it might help you with your love life. So stay tuned to that. So I love this quote by uh, one of the Shark Tank guys, Robert, I'm not gonna say his last name, um, Herjavec. Don't start a business, find a problem, solve a problem, the business comes second. To me, branding is business. Creating a business is creating a brand. They go hand in hand. And the way I interpret this quote is, if you start a business that solves a problem, that business should be successful. And newsflash, guys, we've got a pretty big problem here, right? Medicare, everybody's confused by it. Nobody knows what the heck's going on. So we've got the problem. We've got the problem solvers, you guys, me. Now we just need people to find us so that we can solve the problem. So we need that brand. We need that business so people can find us. You're gonna, oh my gosh, I about dropped that. You're gonna hear this <laughs> common theme throughout this talk. So what are some keys to a strong brand? Listen, you want to differentiate yourself. You have to be different if you wanna stand out. I mentioned earlier that, you know, I don't know if my name is the Medicare specialist or the Medicare specialist because no one knows me by that. Everyone, our brand is our website, which is ru64.com. Um, our slogan is, don't wait until you're 65 to call, ru64.com. And that's how people remember us because it's a little bit different. Basically, the way we differentiated ourselves was, while everyone else out there is being attacked at 64 and a half, or most agents are attacking at 64 and a half, we said, hey, we're gonna get them at 64, it's the long game, but that's what we're in it for. That's what renewals and branding and starting a business is all about, the long game. So we said we're gonna get them at 64. So you wanna be different so that you can be remembered. And people remember 64. I was at my high school reunion the other day, uh, 20 years, high school reunion, and people were like, 64, 64, my aunt's 64, you're 64, I'm not 64. It was all about 64 and they were kind of making fun of me, but I was like, that's cool, sweet, you remember. So you just wanna be remembered, so be different, so that you can be remembered and ultimately you can be found. That's what we're trying to do. Create a business, create a brand so people can find you. So let's be findable. How can we be findable? This is, this is pretty simplistic and a lot of you guys might already have it, but some of you may not. So this can really help. You want to be findable. An easy way to be findable is to create a Google business page. This is super simple, super easy, and it doesn't take much time at all. You can do it tonight if you don't have one. You want to be local. Very important to be local. You want a local phone number. You want a local address. This is an important piece. You want to verify your address. So you create the account and then you punch in your address. They'll mail you a postcard in like a week. You'll get this little code, you enter it in, and then you are literally on the map. You're on Google Maps. You are verified. And this is important because when people search for Medicare in Savannah, the SEO is doing its thing and the algorithm and people are finding me because I am on the map. I'm verified. Important. Whenever you verify your address or whenever you put an address in, don't put your home address. Nobody wants to go to your house and your little picture will show up of your house and your yard's not cut and all that. So don't put, your, don't put your home address. If you live in a high rise downtown, put it on there. It can look like a, like a business, but either get a business, an office, or uh, get a virtual office. It costs a couple hundred bucks, but be local. This is huge. That's part of our main strategy is being local. Next, Google reviews. Everything in our world is reviews. Like we don't buy anything unless it has great reviews. So why in the world would we think that our customers don't think the same thing about us? Like it's shocking. I told you I hide in the shadows in these groups. I hide in the shadows and like gurus, mentors and uh, Christian Brindle's group. I hide in the shadows, but I'm watching you. I'm looking at your Google pages and I'm looking at your reviews and it's shocking to me how few reviews I see even from some big dogs. So Google reviews are everything. I mean, for me, I just bought a spatula the other day on Amazon and I spent way too much time looking for this spatula. And ultimately I decided on one that had like 30,000 reviews and had a good grip and it wasn't gonna melt. Reviews are everything. You gotta get them. 
Um, let me give you some tips on how to get some reviews. So I hope that you're doing a follow-up call. Like let's say that you got somebody going effective May 1st. We call our clients on the 10th of each month. So let's say May 10th, we're doing a follow-up call. Guys, it is so easy to separate yourself from everybody else. Customer service is dead. It is freakish how much your customers will love you if you just reach out to them. It's so simple. So I hope you're making that call, that follow-up. And in our follow-up call, we're saying, hey, Ms. Jones, just make sure you got your cards, making sure you're happy, if you've got any questions. And usually they're just over the moon, like, oh my God, Chip, I can't believe you called. And you've been so great and you've helped me through this whole thing. You've been amazing and that's your chance. Hey, you keep saying all this nice stuff about me. I'm gonna ask you for some Google reviews. And typically they'll be like, oh, of course, definitely consider it done. But what happens? They don't leave it. Maybe about 15% of the time because they are not incentivized. Everyone wants to be incentivized. I do, you do, they do. So we incentivize them. And uh, compliance police, y'all can send me an email later. I think this is fine, but y'all can ask your upline about this. Um, so yeah, whenever I'm talking to them and they're saying, hey, yeah, oh man, so great, you did such a great job. I say, and we'll definitely leave the review. I say, okay, well actually we'll send you an Amazon gift card for 25 bucks if you leave us a Google review. No pressure, one or five stars. There's pressure, five stars. Um, and, and they will. And don't just say, hey, I'll send you one. Say, I will email this thing to you right away. Everything is instant gratification these days. You need to send that, say, I will email you that Amazon gift card as soon as you leave that review. And I promise you, you will get those Google reviews up. They help so much. People call us all the time. Hey, Chip, I called you because you had the most reviews and they were great. I'm like, well, that's common sense. All right, cool. So benefits of a brand. Why did I start my brand, my business, my company? Honestly, like most of you guys, I hate chargebacks. I hated the lack of loyalty. I hated just grinding and hunting nonstop and then someone you know, dropped me. And I said, I'm gonna stop being a hunter. I wanna be a gatherer. And to me, this is, this is the whole thing. This is, this is branding, this is creating the business. Getting people to call you. There is no better feeling than when someone calls you to get their Medicare or if they're turning 65, there's no better feeling. So it's that hunter versus gatherer approach. For the longest time I was a hunter and many of you are probably hunters, but when you hunt, you have to depend on someone else to provide you with ammo, with leads, and then they're in control of the ammo. How much does it cost? How accurate is it? And you know, if you, if you like that, that's fine, but if you want the control to be in someone else's hand, then you, know, you will continue to be a hunter. But if you want to gather, if you want people to call you, if you wanna grow a garden, if you wanna fertilize it and water it and, and choose how much money you put into it and harvest what you want, you know, you can become a gatherer. There is no better feeling when someone calls me and says, Chip, I'm getting 10,000 things from all the hunters out there, and I just want you to sift through it for me. I'm like, come on now, I got you, I got you. Justin did a really good talk on immature versus mature marketing. I put that down there because that kind of relates to what I'm talking about here on some different marketing strategies. I encourage you guys to check that out. It can help you recruit. Having a strong brand can help you recruit. One of the best calls I've ever gotten was from Brandon Riggs, he's sitting over here somewhere. He Googled me one day and was like, hey, I'm one of the top PNC agents in the country. I think I wanna sell Medicare. Turns out this dude's taking me to a whole nother level. Um, so it can help you recruit and it can help you retain. In the world of FMOs, you know, what's the difference in these FMOs? Yeah, culture, leadership, I believe in all that. But when it comes down to it, it's like, how much co-op dollars can I give you? Can I give you a little bit of extra override? But if you can separate yourself from that, and if you have a brand and you have that inbound lead, you know, we're doing all this television. We have all these beautiful turn 65 leads coming in. Once, you know, our agents get a taste of that, it's harder for them to leave even for a little extra override because they've gotten taste. They've gotten a taste of that delicious, T65 inbound lead, and people don't want to hunt once they get a little taste of gathering. It can help you legitimize your business. 
look, I'm not saying I feel this way, but traveling door to door, insurance salesman, scamming old people. You ever heard that? It's like, we get a bad rap. Yeah, you get kind of a bad rap. And for the longest time, when I got out of college, my friends were all lawyers and uh, financial advisors and physical therapists. And I was a little bit of a shame to say, you know, I'm out there knocking on doors, scamming old people, as they would say. Um, and so creating this business now, now I'm proud. I have a business that I am proud. When I went to that 20 year reunion, I was proud to tell them I have a company. I've got a business uh, that's doing really well. So it can help legitimize. It's fun. It is fun to brand. It is so much fun. I put it on everything. I put on hats, koozies, t-shirts. I literally have on my license plate, RU64. I swear to God. I, I literally have RU64 on there and I'm kind of regretting it because I had to tone down my road rage a little bit because people, <laughs> I got an email from a lady one time that was like, hey, whoever's driving that RU64 mobile, I was like, RU64 mobile, that sounds cool. And she was like, whoever's driving that thing, they, they cut me off and blah, blah, blah. I wrote her back. I was like, I'll, I'll find out who that agent is and we'll have a talk. I was like, that's me. Put it everywhere. Let me give you a couple of sneaky tips where to put your logo or your brand. Golf balls. I am really good at losing them, and the senior market's really good at finding them. Put them on some golf balls. Even sneakier if you're a golfer, golf tees. I put my logo on golf tees. Every time I walk up to a tee box, I reach my hand in my pocket, I grab about 15 of them, and I feed the chickens with them. I'm feeding the chickens. Tees all over the tee box. Put it everywhere. <clears throat> So now that we have created a brand, we need to believe in that brand. And when I say believe, I mean, you gotta spend some money. That's when you believe, when you will spend money on marketing or advertising. I talk to folks all the time that own businesses, and I'm like, do you believe in your business? I'm like, oh yeah, I believe. I'm like, how much money do you spend on advertising? They're like, oh, we're kind of word of mouth. I'm like, you don't believe. You don't believe, you have to believe, you have to spend money. We do a ton of television advertising and my, uh, my upline over here, Shanna, is cringing a little bit, probably because we spend a ton and she helps us out a lot, but she believes, she believes, and it's the long play for television. But we're in this thing for the long play. We might as well play long. We're in it for the renewals, building the brand. So. There's a term, this marketing technique that you can use across multiple strategies that I want to talk about. It's called frequency. And I learned this through doing television advertising. Let me tell you a quick story. So I've got a two year old named Luca and he has an extremely limited vocabulary. Every morning, he's like my little human alarm clock. He wakes me up at 5.30 AM and he says the same thing every single day. The first words out of his mouth are, French toast, French toast, okay? French toast are the first words out of his mouth every single day. And I am, I'm pretty sure he doesn't know what French toast is. I think that he thinks it means I'm hungry or breakfast. But either way, as I walk to the kitchen, like what the hell am I gonna cook this kid every single morning? Let me tell you, the boy gets a lot of French toast, okay? Because that frequency is in my head every day. French toast, French toast. And that's what I'm getting at. Frequency. When we're advertising, this is the one time that I, I'm, a, I'm a, a quality guy. I like quality over quantity 100 out of 100 times. Well, maybe 99 out of 100 because this is the one time when you have frequency that you need more quantity over quality. And let me try to explain it in television terms. Because again, we do a lot of television advertising. Um, let's say you have a $4,000 budget for TV. And Justin, I don't know if he's in here, um, tried to steal my thunder this morning. He, you know, we, they were talking about um, nuggets. Everybody takes a nugget away. Well, I know what Justin's is. It's frequency. Look through my slides. I got that frequency talk, but no. Yeah, he, he's exactly right about it when he was, if y'all saw him this morning. Um, say you have a $4,000 budget. We don't want to put it across 30 days the whole month, okay? We want to build frequency. We need people to see us more in a small amount of time. So instead of running that across 
four weeks or one month, let's cram it down to two weeks. We're gonna run that commercial during two weeks. That way people are seeing us more within those two weeks. So let's take it a step further. Let's go from seven days a week, let's only run it during three days a week. We're getting more frequency. Instead of running it in every program all day long, let's run, pick one program or two. That's like Justin was saying this morning, Wheel of Fortune and the 6 p.m. news is really good for him. And it's similar for us, but you know, noon news or morning shows, regardless, you just wanna pick one or maybe two programs and you just cram that commercial down their throat in that program. And people that watch that show, just like Wheel of Fortune, they, they think you're on all day long. They think you're, you're the man, you're always on. Let's take it a step further. So there's something called, so typically they sell 30 second spots, right? Well, you can actually buy what's called bookends. You can buy two 15 second spots for the price of a 30 and you will have two 15s in that same commercial break. So you'll have the first 15 going in and the last 15 going out. That's your message twice, your website twice, everything twice. It's just, it's just more frequency. And that's what people need to remember. They hear, are you 64? They hear, don't wait until you're 65 to call. Are you 64.com? They hear that over and over and over. And people call me and say, Chip, I'm 64. have no idea why I'm calling you, but I just know I need to. I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. I was watching a movie with my wife and we got trapped in this movie and this commercial popped up. It was extremely low budget. It was about trinkets and treasures and treasures and sell your trinkets and find a treasure. And I was like, this is awful. This is so bad. Next commercial break, trinkets and treasures. I was like, these people are going bankrupt. I don't know why they're spending money on this thing. Who the hell's buying trinkets and treasures, right? So we keep watching this movie and watching this movie and this thing played five, six, seven times. About the eighth time, I was like, honey, I think some trinkets will look lovely right underneath the television right here. Like frequency will get you. It will get you. You can, and you can use this across multiple strategies. Billboards, you don't wanna go buy a $10,000 billboard on the highway. Go buy 10 $1,000 billboards in a neighborhood. So anybody who lives in that neighborhood sees you constantly. And they're like, okay, this is the person I gotta talk to. And then the next quarter, move it to another neighborhood. Same thing, it's, it's more quantity than quality when it comes to frequency. Direct mail, you can, you can use all kinds of parallels here, but drop every week, you know, work every day. This works on, on a lot of different marketing strategies, but frequency is important. All right, so sales tip. Sales to me, sales is psychological. It is so psychological and this sales tip goes against the grain, I promise, it will. And some of you will not agree with it, but sales is psychological and so is dating. So is dating. And so I'm writing a book called Date the Sale. It's the art of the slow play. Let me just ask a question. Anybody ever hooked up on the first date? Anybody? You, you look like a closer. You probably didn't marry that chick, did you? Nope. Probably didn't marry that chick. Stop trying to hook up on the first date so we can marry these people. Let's get that lifetime value. That's what we're all talking about, right? We want renewals. I'm a firm believer that the more dates you have before closing the deal, the better chance you have of that lifetime value of that marriage. So a couple of things here. You ever heard uh, desperation is a stinky perfume? Clients can smell that. They can smell that desperation. Don't be desperate. We want them, but we don't need them. Don't be too thirsty. I had one of my guys the other night, we had a couple of hits on the website, beautiful turn 65 leads. And I texted him, I said, hey man, you know, hit these up in the morning, it looks like good ones. He was like, I already texted them, they didn't respond. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're being too thirsty. You calm down a little bit, all right? Everyone out there is attacking these folks so much. We are trying to take this approach where we're backing off a little bit. Look, we got this. Play hard to get. Look, this comes down to people do not want to be caught off guard. I don't want to be caught off guard. You don't want to be caught off guard. You don't want to be pressured. I used to wait, I used to wait tables all through high school and college. Let's say I'm working a, a lunch shift. If somebody came up to me and said, hey, Chip, can you pick up my shift in like two weeks? 
I'd be like, I don't care. I don't know anything about two weeks. Sure, perfect. But if they came up to me during that lunch shift and they said, Chip, can you pick up that my shift tonight, please? I'd be like, you're attacking me right now. Back up. No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm definitely not picking up your shift. And clients feel the same thing. Even when they call me and say, Chip, I, I'm a referral or I'm turning 65 or I've seen your commercials a million times. Like I'm definitely going to do business with you. I still do not hook up with them on the first date because I want a couple more dates to equal that marriage, that lifetime value. So what am I talking about here? Just, it's very simple. Schedule them out. Schedule them out. I think I'm having some mic stuff. Schedule them out. Brandon Riggs, the guy I was just talking about, who's amazing. I mean, he's a super duper closer. He's got all these beautiful turn 65 leads coming in left and right. And while his numbers are amazing, say they're like 80%, you know, there's just 20% out there. And we're like, you know, what's going on with these? And he took that one extra step of just never hooking up that first time and set that date. And there's something about it. People just don't want to be caught off guard. Even though they're not caught off guard, they called you. Psychological. Dating is psychological. Sales is psychological. And also, whenever you do um, try to schedule them out, be busy. Don't be like, I'm wide open. I'm wide open the next couple of weeks. Josh Lustig touched on this yesterday. It's like when you drive by a restaurant and there's one car in the parking lot, even though it had great reviews, and we love reviews, right? You drive by, you're like, oh, ghost town. I don't know. I don't know about this one. And then you're like, oh, Applebee's a slam. Let's go wait for 45 minutes, you know? People want to be where the people are. So be busy. Be busy. Stop trying to hook up. Stop trying to microwave it. Put it in the oven. All right. I don't know if, can you press play on this, Steven? This, I don't know if I can do it from right here. I'm going to show you guys a commercial. All right. Real quick. What do we got? Looks like 64 yards to the pin. About 64 mile per hour winds. Dude, there's no wind. Head my 64 degree wedge. What's it with you in 64? Are you 64? Dot com! That's, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. That was a, a kind of a goofy one we did. Not, you know, don't start with a silly one. Get build your reputation up. Be serious. Educate. And we've done that for a few years, so we took a chance on that. And that's kind of what I'm getting at here. Look, branding and building a business can be so much fun. Don't be scared to take a chance. Step outside your comfort zone. Take a risk, and just go for it. Just go for it. Thanks, guys. That's my time. I appreciate you.